Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, further arrests made in the assassination of General Moise in amidst the crisis in Haiti, several arrested as police crackdown on homeless encampments in Canada, reporters without borders demands halt on Pegasus spyware exports and in our video section we take a look at the Summer Olympics in Japan where there are growing calls for cancellation. In our first story, we go to Haiti where investigations into the killing of de facto President Jonal Moïse are ongoing. Authorities have stated that 26 suspects have been detained so far, including 18 former Colombian soldiers. Three Haitian police officers have also been detained alongside at least two Haitian Americans. Among them is Pastor and Dr. Christian Emmanuel, Christian Emmanuel Sanon, who has been named as by officials as the alleged mastermind. Police Chief Leon Charles stated on July 14 that Moïse's assassination had been planned in the Dominican Republic. He showed a photo of Sinan with the director of the US-based company CTU Security and the head of the Council of Worldwide Capital Lending Group. These two firms have been accused of financing and planning Moise's assassination. Meanwhile, a wanted notice has also been issued against Senator and Moise critic John Joel Joseph. With several key details of the assassination still unclear, people in Haiti have raised several questions. These are related to the role of the police in leading the investigation. Moreover, as reported by AP, no one from the president's security detail was injured. Haiti is also witnessing a political crisis in the absence of a parliament. With regular constitutional norms not in place, Moise appointed Moise appointee Ariel Henry took over as Prime Minister on July 19th. He has replaced Claude Joseph, who has taken over as the head of state after Moise's assassination. Meanwhile, the people of Haiti continue to face violence and insecurity. The country has been witnessing a surge in kidnappings and attacks by armed groups. Local media reported that 10 people were abducted from a bus headed to Port-au-Prince on July 15th. The attack was carried out by a group of armed individuals and the driver stated that their passengers' belongings were robbed. Seven of the abducted people were later released. Fighting between armed groups in Port-au-Prince is estimated to have displaced over 10,000 people in June. A radio channel has also reported several fuel shortages in the country with long lines at gas stations. Several civil society groups are now coming together to find possible solutions to the ongoing crisis. In our next story, several people were injured after police violently evicted a homeless encampment in Canada. Located in the city of Toronto, several unhoused people had been living in the Lamport Stadium Park for weeks. Local organizers reported that hundreds of people had gathered to protect the camp on July 21st. However, on orders of the city government, police broke through the fences and barricades. The standoff between the protesters and the police reportedly lasted around 8 hours. According to the Encampment Support Network Toronto, 26 people were arrested by the day's end. They are facing charges including obstruction and assaulting police officers and trespassing. In an official press release, city officials stated that 30 structures had been removed from Lampard Stadium. It further stated that two people had accepted referrals to a shelter or hotel and five were already in the shelter system. The release also stated that three people left and one person refused permanent housing. Wednesday's events at Lamport Stadium followed similar violent eviction of 26 people from Alexandra Park. As per an official statement, 68 structures were removed from the area on July 20th. Toronto city officials have issued four trespassing notices to encampment citing COVID-19 risks. While officials have stated that indoor housing has been offered, unhoused people have been exiting shelters over the past few months. This is due to several factors such as increased and random check-ins and strict restrictions on movement and amount of belongings. Moreover, the insecurity of the accommodation also leads to people ending up back on the streets. Activists have now increased calls for more sustainable and affordable forms of housing. We are now next going to talk about the Pegasus scandal where Reporters Without Borders is reminded that Israel stopped the export of the spyware. This follows revelations made this week by 17 media organizations as part of Pegasus project. Findings have shown that the spyware developed by the Israeli NSO group was used to target journalists, activists and lawyers. A list of 50,000 phone numbers has been found in a massive database. Over 1,000 people across more than 50 countries have been identified so far. The presence of spyware has been confirmed in 37 instruments. Nearly 200 journalists and editors working in news agencies including Reuters, The New York Times and The Wire were targeted. Moreover, 14 heads of state including 3 presidents, 10 prime ministers and a king also feature in the list. These include French President Emmanuel Macron, Iraq's Barham Saleh and South Africa's Cyril Ramphosa. The prime ministers of Pakistan, Egypt and Morocco were also targeted and may have been targets of spying. The numbers of at least 50 people linked to Mexican President Andrel Manuel Lopez Obrador were also found on the list. The NSO group has stated that Pegasus is sold exclusively to government agencies to fight terrorism and crime. As reported by The Guardian, the company is closely regulated by the Israeli Defense Ministry. Reporters Without Borders has argued that Israel is using NSO exports as a supplement to its foreign policy. The organization has demanded a halt on the sale of spyware until the regulatory framework is established. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Thank you.